Hello and welcome everyone to our KwaZulu Natal virtual fam with Satsa and Tourism KwaZulu Natal. I know we would all much rather be in KwaZulu Natal and having this fam there, but at least we can still see each other in a room, so that's a good thing. We're going to keep it casual today. Some of you who were on yesterday's call will know that when there's technology involved, sometimes there are a few challenges, so you'll please forgive us if a video doesn't run perfectly or if someone's been on mute and they've forgotten to unmute themselves, etc., etc. We're all learning from this. Uh, before we get started, just some housekeeping, and I'm glad I'm saying this because I can hear that some of you are not on mute, and so there's some background noise. So please, 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 if I can ask you to just double check whether you are on mute, and to keep checking that you are on mute if you're not talking, and that it is easy as there is the microphone on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. Just click on it and it will unmute yourself. And if you don't mute yourself, I will do the honors for you. So let's just see. And I will also ask Roland and Emily just to keep track of anyone who has forgotten to mute themselves, that we don't have loads of background noise and so that the user experience is great. Okay. So if you would like to ask a question, please throw that into the chat for us. We'll either answer that question in the chat live or at the end, when we do our Q&A, we will respond to those questions as well. So as I said, let's keep it casual. We've got about 106 participants in the room already. And um, yeah, let's just have, have a little bit of fun. We had a great time yesterday going on a road trip through the KZN. I'm looking forward to that happening again today. So first up, we are going to play a recording by David Frost. So David Frost is not able to join us today, but he has thankfully done a little bit of a video recording for us. And so I'm going to share my screen and just play that for you. And let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, thumbs up. Good afternoon and welcome to this incredibly exciting uh, first initiative, um, a partnership between SATSA and Tourism. KZN. Um, the virtual fam that we've put together um, is an incredibly exciting initiative um, in this uh, new world we find ourselves in. Um, we trust it's going to be fruitful for all of you and you are going to have um, some really illuminating uh, um, conversations, um, which we, are, we hope are going to put us in a good stead um, going forward. We've pioneered this in other parts of the uh, country, and we've seen great success in terms of um, not only unearthing new product, but really acquainting um, the buyer community with the great hidden gems and uh, parts of the province that uh, they may not have um, really known about. And, and indeed, um, really taking that onto a sellable platform. So the partnership and the initiative is all around um, and built around um, inclusivity and opening up um, access. Um, there is strong demand from the overseas buying community, really looking and, 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 and excited about new product that uh, we have in South Africa. And the product offering in KZN, that's one of my favorite parts of the world, is, I think, um, really splendid in this, in this regard. Um, so I think that you're going to have um, an amazing couple of days. Um, really, you know, take this opportunity, guys. Um, we don't find ourselves in, a, in, a, in an exciting time tourism-wise within the country, but things will get better. We will be able to open up in the near future, and we'll be able to do it um, safely and secure in the knowledge um, that we can, that we can offer a compelling product to both domestic and overseas travelers in a safe environment. I want to urge you all in this, in this time, please just exercise, um, and I know this is different, but just to exercise patience and focus on the positive initiatives such as the MegaFam that we've um, put together. It's these types of initiatives that continue to um, take us forward that continue to sort of focus us on, 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 on tangible outcomes um, that can open the, the uh, sector up. So I wish you a great couple of days, um, uh, happy hunting, 
and uh, really have 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 fun in your uh, in your pursuits. Thank you so much. Happy hunting, indeed. Okay, so first on our list is the delightful Tuli, who took us on a joy ride yesterday. So I can't wait to see what she's going to be sharing with us today. Tuli, you are up from TKZN, and she started sharing her screen. So off you go. Thank you very much, Natalie, and um, a very good afternoon to everyone. In the warm Zulu welcome, we normally say Siana Muga Elagwa Zulu Natal, and we hope that you are going to have a fantastic stay with us as we take you through what this beautiful province has on offer. So, um, welcome to Wazulu Natal. Wazulu Natal is a world, a, a world renowned destination that is situated on the east coast of our beautiful country. This is a province that's steeped in rich history and a vibrant cultural heritage, which is a reflection of our beautiful rainbow nation. This is home to premium leisure and outdoor adventures, and it stretches from pristine coastlines to peaks of the Ukashamba Drakensberg mountain and reaching wild terrain where the big five still roam free. This is, a def this is definitely a must visit destination with something for everyone. With a picturesque uh, 600 kilometer coastline and the best protected indigenous coastal forest and world, world heritage sites, we have Isimangali So Wetlands Park, which is one of the UNESCO um, heritage sites, as well as the mountainous uh, Ukashamba Drakensberg, the second uh, heritage site, the province is also home to the world-class nature reserves, and I can just um, mention uh, one of them being Ushikusuwe Mfolozi Park, which is the oldest nature reserve in Africa. The province itself derives its name from the Zulu meaning of the word Kwazulu, and this is the dwelling place of the Zulus. It also has another meaning, which is paradise, which explains why it's such an amazingly beautiful province. It also derives its name from the name Porto Natalia, which is given to Port of Deben by early Portuguese explorers. KZN's pride lies in its people and its impeccable legacy of being a dream destination. The province is accessible through road, it's accessible through air, rail, as well as sea. The province has two ports, and that is the Port of Deben, which has the largest container terminal in the Southern Hemisphere. We also have the, the port of Richards Bay, which is situated in the north of the province. And this is a dynamic, constantly developing first world logistic hub. And if I could just give you stats, it's basically responsible for, for, for 80 million tons of, of, of cargo per annum, which represents 57% of South Africa's seaborne cargo. And this, this places it at the very forefront of Africa's ports. The province um, also has, um, also has uh, direct airlines that fly into, into King Shaga Deben, Deben International. And that is um, from an international airlines, we have Emirates, we have Mauritius, we have Qatar Airways, we have Turkish Airways, as well as British Airways. British Airways is actually our latest acquisition which came into the province in October of 2018. Each one of these flies about three times a week into the province. Then we have domestic airlines, um, such as South African um, Airways, British Airways. We also have SA Air Link, SA Express, as well as Ulula. And these fly from Johannesburg and Cape Town into, De into Deben. And, and um, uh, uh, these, these are the ones that we have that actually fly into the province. In terms of how we sell the province, the province is sold on the basis of, 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 of the big five um, attractions. Um, and these are action adventure. We also have land and water safaris. We really pride ourselves as having the big five of the, of the land safaris and also the big uh, players in terms of your water safaris. We also pride ourselves for scenic beauty. We have coastal and beach experiences and we have cultural and heritage experiences. In fact, KwaZulu Natal is known as the melting pot of culture, where there is a combination of your Zulu culture, 
your Indian culture, your African uh, Dutch culture, as well as your English culture. So this makes this a destination that truly has it all. And over the years, um, this particular destination has become known for its seaside splendor and wild safari adventures that show off the big five. But there's always a new discoveries to be made in, South, in, in, in this South Africa's sunniest city. Yesterday, I took you on the joy ride. Today, I will have decided I'm going to take you on a donkey ride because it's very critical that you have a full understanding of what this beautiful province has on offer. So we don't have seatbelt for donkeys, but I would highly uh, 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 recommend that you imagine those seatbelts, fasten them, and let me take you on a joy ride through this beautiful province. The first stop is the beautiful city of Deben. Deben is the gateway to the rest of, uh, of the province. This bustling, uh, the bustling Deben is the hub of the province's busiest uh, business and industry, and it passes with all the energy of a major port city. It has luxurious hotels, and it also has um, a, a accommodation that uh, straddles the beachfront. This city is often referred to as the Miami Beach of, of South Africa. Deben is blessed with balmy weather, and an all year round, and this and this we get all year round, and this makes it a perfect holiday paradise. The beachfront is bordered by holiday accommodation and five star hotels and luxury apartments, all of which have an idyllic view of the Indian Ocean. The central business district, which is a hive of activity, is within easy reach of all hotels and convention venues. This is a major gateway to Africa, and it's also the largest and busiest port city on the continent. And due to this, there is an extensive road network leading to and from uh, any destination in South Africa. We also have the International Convention Center, which is centrally located. Um, and this is an innovative world-class co convention center, which can cater for conferences of up to 5,000 people. This is also known as a, as, as a sporting paradise, and that's because of the sunny climate, which is, um, which is combined with a world of facilities that makes for a, 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 an all year round sporting, sporting uh, extravaganza. So we have water sports such as surfing, we have uh, body board, uh, bodyboarding, we have sailing, we have scuba diving, and our obvious favorites given to the proximity to the warm, uh, warm Indian Ocean. We also boast of museums. We have amazing markets for those that are interested in buying uh, anything from spices to traditional outfits to traditional wear. And all those that are interested in rich heritage, you can go uh, on the Inanna Heritage site. And those that are interested in scenic beauty, the value of the Thousand Hills is one of those that we highly recommend. Our donkey is going to cut, uh, cut us along and uh, we'll land at uh, the south coast. The, su the, the south coast is a region on the southern coast of, of, of KwaZulu-Natal, and it stretches from Scottsbeck in the, north, uh, the, in the north to Port Edward in the south and Harding in the west. The south coast is magnific magnificent for its natural beauty, and there are many things to do and see here. It's, an, its natural treasures include sprawling beaches that are left by the warm waters of the Indian Ocean, tranquil lagoons, and rocky calves. Slightly further inland, there are also there are subtropical forests, rolling grassy hills, and spectacular greenery. What's more, the South Coast enjoys, uh, enjoys sunny weather almost all year round, which means that it's also a lovely winter destination in South Africa. The warm ocean, is home to loads of colorful and unique marine species. So you can discover a whole new world when you explore them by snorkeling or scuba diving beneath the surface. You also have Alual Shoal, which is near Umkomazi, which is renowned as, as one of the best diving spots in the country. I always say that the South Coast is probably the, the, the adventure capital of the world. 
And I say this because of the likes of your Oribi Nature Reserve that, that has the, the, the longest swing in the world. You also have, um, uh, you also have um, uh, zip lines um, um, uh, uh, along this place as well, which really makes it for a, a paradise for those that are really interested in, in for those that are interested in, 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 in adventure sports. Then we move on to the North Coast. The North Coast is also known as the Dolphin Coast. The Dolphin Coast stretches from the Tongat River at, Z uh, at Zimbali to Zingwazi Beach and the Togela River mouth in the north. It also includes the inland areas of Umshali and Shaka's Kroll. This has become known as the Dolphin Coast. This is because uh, it's frequented, um, or, or we frequently see sightings of bottlenose dol uh, dolphins who ride the waves of the Indian Ocean in large frolicking schools. The Dolphin Coast is, the, is a beautiful playground of warm waters, um, incredible waves, and glorious beaches set alongside fields of sugar cane in a part of the world that's endowed with humid and warm weather almost throughout the year. You also have pretty uh, co coastal holiday towns like Banito, Sok Rock, Umjodi, and Zingwazi. And um, these um, uh, 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 bask in effortless sunshine field days which we, with perfect swimming and surfing condition and a collection of tidal pools as well as excellent fishing spots. These are attractions uh, uh, th th that are found on the north coast. And one can visit also Shaga's grave at Kwatubuza and take a, 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 a multi trail through the Harold Johnson Nature Reserve, which includes picnic sites, or you could also visit the historic battle sites of ultimate, Ultimatum Tree of, of, of Fort Pearson. We then take a, 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 a drive, and this time we go to the Pisa Maris Midlands area. Now, this area is the heart of Wazulu Natal. It has a collection of arranged routes that offer visitors hospitality in truly beautiful surroundings, outstanding accommodation, conference and wedding facilities, fascinating local events, fabulous cuisine and restaurants. And it also has revitalizing um, outdoor activities. And, over, and it also have, uh, has, um, it says over the top adventure spots. If you're interested in historic landmarks, this is the place that you want to go to. It also has wildlife conservation. And best of all, for those that are interested in unique arts and craft, in this area, you can shop till you drop. This is an easy one drive from Devon and a four and a half hours drive on the entry highway from Johannesburg. And in this area, there is so much to explore to do. You also can do a hot air ballooning. We also have the Mandela capture site. And for those that are interested in canopy tours, definitely we have that on offer in this particular region. Yeah. Moving on to Ukaflamba, Drakensberg. Now, this is the home to the highest mountain range in Southern Africa. And it has the second uh, highest waterfall in the world, which is Dugela Falls. Actually, there has been an argument that Tugela Falls might actually be the highest falls in the world. And it's one of the, uh, the two KZN UNESCO heritage sites. The, er the area is also famously known as the gateway to the central and northern, uh, and northern Drakensberg. The, the northern Drakensberg of South Africa, or as they are known in Zulu, Ukashamba, which is the, the barrier of spears, is a 200 kilometer long mountainous wonderland and world heritage site, making it a tourism mecca for outdoor in, in enthusiasts. So if you are interested in going hiking, highly recommended here as it has the most scenic hike uh, routes that you can, you can find in the world. We also have a, a, a cultural villages such as the Mazini cultural villages, and those that are interested in history, we have Bushman Caves where actually Bushman um, a, a, a paintings can be seen there. Now I'd like us to take a, a, a donkey ride down to the battlefields. This particular area 
is not only the place of some of the most picturesque landscape. We have the sweeping hills and knotty rock formations that pepper the rolling plains and valleys of northern and central KZN. These are also the site of, of a concentration of historical battles that took place over numerous years and shaped the history of both South Africa and British history. The region boasts about 82, uh, 82 battlefields, it has museums, it, had, it has old fortifications and places of remembrance. Then we move on to Zululand, which is my hometown. Zululand is an area where nature and ancient culture abound. Just north of the Dolphin Coast, um, in a malaria free area, Zululand extends up to Richards Bay along the north coast of KZN and inland into the heart of KwaZulu Natal, extending north to Pongola and also including the little towns of Ulundi and Fryhead that lie on the border of, of the battlefield route. This particular area is an area that's truly rich in symbolism and tradition. And the old age Zulu culture still remains today. If you are interested in a Zulu monarch, which is probably one of the old, oldest monarchs in the world, you will find it here. Those that are interested in visiting our king and his wives, you'll be able to explore the palaces in this area. Visitors are, also, are, 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 are given an opportunity to go into the heart of Zulu villages. So you have villages such as Ushagaland and Tumazulu, where one can visit a Sangoma, watch a rule and wedding ceremony, and experience Zulu hospitality. There are also numerous parks, farms, and nature reserves. The Zulu bedding route, which, is over, which has over 650 species of birds, offers an incredible diversity for those that are, are bird lovers. The last area we will stop, or we will stop at is the Elephant Coast. And this is the home uh, to the world's renowned Fufuwe in Folozi Park and the Isimangaliso Wetlands Park. It is, a, it is characterized by untamed wetlands, uh, teeming bird life, big five bush uh, uh, breakaways, and beautiful beaches that bring sea turtles to the shore to lay their eggs in one of nature's most time-honored ceremonies. Isimangaliso stretches 220 kilometers from Cape St. Lucia to the Mozambique borders and is a World Heritage Site. It's also dominated by Lake St. Lucia and the St. Lucia Estuary, which it, with its network of coastal lakes, dunes, subtropical uh, forests, you also have swamps and wetland systems that are a haven for indigenous fauna and flora. Those that are interested in tiger fishing, you can do that in the Josini area, if you are interested in turtle uh, spotting, highly recommend that you do that around November to March. Um, and those that are also uh, interested in, in whale watching, again, highly recommended that you do it along those, uh, along those lines. So I'm hoping with this short ride, you, you, you got to see um, in, in a few minutes what this beautiful destination has on offer. And as I conclude, I really invite you to take in all the sights, sounds, and smells of our beautiful province as you journey through untamed bushland and wildlife. You can even educate yourself about the deep-seated culture and history of the Zulu Kingdom. Whatever it is that you are looking for, we probably have it in this, in this destination. And I always say to people that visit KZN and that, do not, and that, do, that are interested in visiting KZN is that you need to brace yourself because once you experience the soul of this beautiful province, I can promise you, you will never look, uh, look back. So welcome, Siana Mugela. I hope you'll have an, a, a wonderful stay with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tuli. Okay, we're about to go into the next part of our session, which is the speed work networking part. So if you've just joined us halfway through, if I could please keep Ask, your, ask you to please keep yourself on mute. If you are not talking, just double check that you are on mute if you are not talking. And also for our presenters to please make sure that their presentations are ready and to share those presentations in present format when it is your turn to speak and also to unmute yourself. 
So I'm going to call on each of you in alphabetical order, I can see here, and just make sure that you're ready to rumble so that we can keep the momentum going and the energy up. And speaking of energy, our first presenter is none other than Bunny Bola, who you all know and love from African Link. I know Bunny is going to kickstart us with energy. Bunny, please feel free to unmute yourself and share your screen if you are presenting. Hi, Natalie. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Freedom Road Bus Tour. We are ready to roll in Peter Maritzburg. It's five to 10 in the morning and our bus is ready to leave. Our Freedom Road Tour covers the footprints of the fathers of the nation, that is Mandela, Gandhi, John Duber, Albert Latuli, and Alan Payton. And our team that is presenting today is Ursula, our marketing guru, Kushanta and Zoe, our specialist tour guides in the Freedom Route. Hi. Terry, our very qualified driver. And today we have our side guides, Zime from the Old Prison. Hello. Safiso from uh, Manaya Hall Luna. and our specialist guide in Klaka. <whistles> okay, we're ready to rock and roll. Don't forget the water, guys. Yay! <laughs> let's go, let's hop on. We're now at the railway station. Welcome to the Pitamasnak railway station. This is a station where Kandi was thrown off the train on 7th of June, 1893. It has a two-sided gold busted, two-sided gold bus of Gandhi and a state-of-the-art museum. It's a fully functional station. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now making our way to the old prison. Zime. Welcome to the old prison. Historically, the old prison was where the freedom fighters were incarcerated like Nelson Mandela, Harry Kuala, Kastupa Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, A.S. Chetty, and many more. Uh, they were kept in our cells. It was built in 1862 as a four-decker building by Corner Architectures. So it contained gallows, small cells, where they do hangings and confinement cells. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now making our way to Imbali, one of the oldest townships in South Africa, and our coach Sifiso waiting for us to take us through. Sifiso. Welcome to Imbali, where is Manai Hall, where Madiba addresses 1,400 people representing 145 political social parties across Africa. And the year was 26 May, 1961. The, the, one, the one man, one vote was actually resolved in this on in Africa conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Last but not least, this is where our tour comes to the end, which is now at the Nelson Mandela capture site, which is there at Harwick. Thank you very much. Ashla. The KwaZulu Natal Freedom Route Tour Bus welcomes you all. We uh, depart every uh, Saturday, Sunday, and on public holidays. We leave from the tourism hub in Peter Maritzburg. Um, we obviously welcome families, and by joining us, you follow the footsteps of legends to victorious freedom. Um, we, we've got, uh, let me just give you the prices for children. It's 50 Rand for children under 12. Children under two are free. Adults, 250 Rand, and that's 10% commissionable to our lovely friends out there. And if you want to see anything more, just go to our website, www.mandelafreedomroute.co.za. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> What a great start. Thanks, guys. Oh, you're going to be a very tough act to follow. So, Andrew Atwood, I hope you're ready and fair lodge because you now have to follow up the Freedom Route. If you can unmute yourself, please. And if you are sharing a screen, which you are fabulous, off you go. Don't forget to unmute yourself. 
So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Andrew Atwood from Antbear Lodge, and we're situated in the Drakensberg Mountains near to Giants Castle. What makes this lodge particularly special is that we're offering accommodation in a luxury cave. Glass doors open onto a wooden deck with hammock chairs and a spectacular view of the Drakensberg Mountains. This is an upmarket eco experience. The cave is cozy, it's comfortable, it has features like a jacuzzi bath, a fireplace, it even has rock art on its walls. We also offer a private dining experience where you can set up a table on the deck of your cave and you dine by candlelight under the stars. Ampe Lodge is one of those smaller, owner-run establishments with 15 accommodation units, either as mountain view suites or as garden view suites. Sustainability and responsible tourism play a huge role in the ethos of this lodge. And we've tried to do as much as possible ourselves. We subscribe to the farm to plate concept. We cook all our meals from scratch and have our own organic vegetable garden, chickens for eggs, cows for milk. We bake our own bread. We even make our own cheese. Ampere Lodge also offers horse trails, ideally suited to beginners. We practice the gentle horse whispering techniques to train our horses and go for slow outrides on the farm. We also arrange for hot air balloon flights that launch directly from the front lawn of the lodge. Our newest attraction is a stargazing hammock camp where a local villager tells you his Zulu folk tales of the stars. This is part of our community entrepreneur development program. It's his own business supported by Ampe Lodge. He picks up his guests after dinner and takes them down to his hammock camp. On cold nights, he prepares the, the hammocks with blankets and hot water bottles, and this is certainly a unique way to experience a little bit of Zulu culture. And the area offers such a lot, with dramatic hiking trails, uh, spectacular views, and incredible waterfalls. The second product that, that I'm presenting is the Giants Castle Slack Packing Trail. This is a three-day walk, luxury walking experience, offering comfortable and varied accommodation, including luggage transfers, a professional hiking guide, conservation fees and delectable catering. We specialize in small intimate groups. This is a three, three day hike through the Lowlands Conservancy and Zulu Waters Private Game Reserve. The hike is gentle in distance, making it perfect for beginners and families, even with uh, uh, children. The lodges offer three course dinners from locally uh, sourced ingredients with hearty breakfasts and picnic lunches are supplied too. The first lodge is Ampe Lodge, which I've already talked about. The second night is at Leopard's Lair Lodge, which offers an authentic agritourism experience. In a lovely uh, family atmosphere where you can meet their whole fa uh, farmyard menagerie, including Lully, their tame Elam. The third night is at the luxury five-star private safari lodge in the Zulu Waters Game Reserve, complete with your own private chef. The, tra the trail takes place uh, through, through the Game Reserve and you can see species like white rhino, buffalo, wildebeest, ostriches, eland, and so much more. So if you like any of what I've talked about, please get hold of me. Details are in your brochure and uh, we do offer great STO rates. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. I loved what you spoke about. It looks absolutely amazing. Uh, next up, we have A.D. Walters, uh, where my queen of charts. If you are with us, could you please unmute yourself and share your presentation with us? Andrew, if you could just unshare your screen for us. And then if we can call on AD, I wear my queen of tarts to come up next. Uh, I did see her earlier, Adrian. Oh, seems to have hopped off. No problem, we'll come back to her. Okie dokes, next on our list, Cathedral Peak, Samantha. Are you with us? I am indeed. Off you go. 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Samantha van der Riet, and I represent Four Star Cathedral Peak Hotel. We are situated in the majestic Ukushlamba Drakensberg Mountains within the World Heritage, its heritage site itself. Since our opening in 1939, the hotel has been owned and operated by my family, the van der Riet's. And we are famous for our warm hospitality, our exceptional service and quality food. We are approximately four and a half hours from Johannesburg and two and a half hours from Durban. Within our immediate area, we could be packaged with the battlefields of Spiankorp and game lodges near Colenso to for create either a Bergen bush or Bergen battlefield experience. Our guests are accommodated in 104 rooms situated in our gardens with beautiful mountain views, ranging from our standard family and superior to our executive and of course our private presidential suite. We provide the ultimate in luxury for up to 254 guests. All our rooms are ensuite with bath and shower, veranda, television, in-room amenities, bar fridge, and tea and coffee making facilities. You'll never want for entertainment at Cathedral Peak. Unrivaled access to the Drakensberg Mountains sees 18 walks and hikes of various levels leaving from the hotel. We offer daily entertainment programs, including three guided hikes, of which some, some of which visit our sand rock art paintings. Those looking for more speed can revel in our mountain bike trails, our jogging routes, horse rides, quad biking, and our on-site helicopter for sightseeing flights. Other facilities include tennis, beach, volleyball, and badminton courts, our children's playground, mini golf course, a climbing tower, and both heated and cold swimming pools, with a paddling pool for the kids. Our crowning jewel is the hotel's very own nine-hole golf course, with its alternate tees for an 18-hole game. For those that are looking for indoor entertainment, we have a games room, table tennis, squash, a fully equipped gym, and a wellness center for some pampering. Our team of top class chefs ensures a delicious array of culinary delights with extensive buffets at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Once the day is done, our guests can relax and reminisce at Albert's cocktail bar with expansive views over the mountains, or keep the party going long into the night in Harry's action bar with pool table, dartboard, and big screen TVs. Our rates are inclusive of a buffet breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as mid-morning and afternoon tea, coffee and bakes. We offer STO rates as well as commission on specials that we run throughout the year. In closing, I would like to just share a short video with you. Great, thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Um, I know AD's been trying to hop on. I think her signal's not great, so she kind of disappears and comes back. So I'll try and slot her in when I can see she's returned. Uh, checking in to see if Neil from Chocolate Heaven is on the call and if he is to share his screen with us and unmute himself. Neil, are you with us? Not okay, it's Drakensberg ballooning. Beyonce, Honeyball, if you are with us, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself and sharing your screen. Beyonce. Sorry, I'm just there you go. not sure how to share the screen for the video to show. Okay, so at the bottom of your screen, there's a little green box. There you go. Okay, I'm not, I first want to do a video. That's what I, with the background. That's absolutely fine. Just click on your video. Can everyone see me? Yes, we can see you. Okay. 
Okay, so everyone knows I'm Tay, but I was going to start like, hi, my name is Tay. I'm representing Droxic Ballooning and Droxic Bush Lodge and Backpackers. This is a place like no other, from farm animals to wild animals, large lakes, unique experiences, and the perfect place to sit back and relax, the, absorb the uh, African sun, and take in a deep breath, a deep breath of fresh mountain air. Located in the beautiful Droxwick region lies our farm that's fenced within a game farm. This property offers various activities on site, like our air balloon rides, walking trails, fishing, sundown or boat rides, romantic picnics, destination weddings in our gorgeous open chapel, and neighboring farm activities, including um, wine tasting and game farm. Since you can't be in person, we've compiled a short clip just for you. Is the sound, Tay? I think if there is, you might just need to unmute yourself so that we can hear the sound. So just remember to unmute yourself. Okay, so now that you've watched our short clip, we'd like to talk a little bit more about our activities, accommodation, and the cost involved. Please note that the prices are per person and are just an estimate. Drakas of Ballooning offers two basic packages, scenic and safari. Both of these packages include an hour flight, full breakfast, and champagne. This is priced from 2,750, which is 150 euros, or 168 American dollars. Sound owner boat trips are from 200 rand a person, which is 10 euros or 12 dollars and picnics from 75 rand which is four euros or five dollars game safari from 200 rand a person which is 10 euros or 12 dollars we'd like to thank you so much for your time and please feel free to contact us for more for more information our details are on the brochures you received and make sure to follow us on social media for any specials and competitions we'd love to hear from you thank you Thank you, Tave. I can just direct you to the chat. Sylvia has asked a couple of questions about your property. So if you wouldn't mind just responding in the chat to those questions, I'd really appreciate it. Next up, we have Kai Schultz from the Carcliffe Canopy Tour. Kai, if you can unmute yourself and if you are sharing a presentation, share your screen. 
Oh, thanks. Hello, everyone. It's great to be doing this. Wow, Chucks, it's been a while since we've uh, been in a room and talk about our products like this, isn't it? So, um, yeah, so Kai Schultz, Karkloof and Drakensberg Canopy Tours. Um, for those that don't know what a canopy tour is, essentially it's a zipline experience which takes your uh, ziplining through the canopy of the forest. The canopy is the top, top layer of the forest. Um, we can take uh, children as young as five and we've had as old as 95 do a canopy tour. So it's rated as sort of a, an all-round adventure activity that sort of works for everybody. Um, and so, yeah, we've got the two sites in KZN. Uh, there's seven canopy tours in Southern Africa. But two in KZN, one is in the, in the KZN Midlands, uh, near the Mandela Capture site, you would have seen from Tuli's presentation. Uh, it's the shop where till you can drop uh, sort of vibe was what, what she spoke about there. Uh, we're about an hour from Durban. And the second site is in the central Drakensberg, and you've heard uh, close to what Tay was talking about, the hot air ballooning, also close to Cathedral Peak Hotel and Ant Bear Lodge that Andrew spoke about. Um, and so that's about two, two and a half hours from Durban. Lots of different things to do, lots of activities. But I think in this day and age, people are wanting to do stuff. Um, these are amazing lodges, and I think Tuli summed it up. If you haven't been to KZN, if you're out there and you're sitting in Europe and you, you obviously can't get here, I, I've been fortunate to travel to many places around the world. And, and to my Cape Town friends, we love Cape Town. Don't get me wrong, but we have a lot to offer here. And uh, of course, when you're coming to South Africa for the first time, there's a few things you've got to do i get that you've got to go and seek table mountain you've got to go to kruger park or a safari experience you've got to go to soweto but listen you can do a lot of awesome things in kzn uh, from adventure amazing accommodation there's not many places where you can go beach bush and berg and so while i want to punt the canopy tours i just want to say come here Come here, all of you are out there. We offer great STO rates. We want to do business. I don't know when you can come, but when you can come, come. We'd love to host you on a canopy tour. And I know the guys that I know here would love to host you and, and show you around so that you can sell this to your clients. Um, if there's any questions, give us a shout. I don't think our rates are expensive. And in RANDs, it's 695 Rand per person. Includes refreshments during the tour. Uh, and of course, we offer SDO rates. Thanks so much. Uh, if there's any questions, give us a shout. Have a great day all. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kai. Next up, we have David Hazelhurst from Ekabazini Zulu Home. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly. My forgiveness is not. Please unmute yourself and share your screen if you are sharing your presentation. Hi, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Hi, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm David from Ikabazini Zulu Home, which is situated 30 minutes from Peter Maritzburg in the Tel Midlands on the shores of the Albert Falls Dam. So <clears throat> it's been in existence for 22 years and we offer people either day or an overnight stay in a truly authentic Zulu homestead. So when I say authentic, we've kept it as it was originally. There is no electricity on the farm whatsoever. We live off the grid. Um, <clears throat> all cooking is done over fires, but lighting is by way of paraffin lamps and huts, and there are proper pollutions with proper flush toilets and hot and cold showers that work off gas geysers. We offer either a day visit, which lasts from approximately 10 o'clock in the morning till half past one, or we offer overnight stays, checking in at two and leaving the next day after breakfast. A typical visit will start with an introduction to the homestead, the layout of the huts, who stayed in what hut, the importance of the various huts. We then go to the cattle crawl, and the traditional Nguni cattle are crawled in the homestead for the visit. We do a full discussion on the Nguni cattle, which is fascinating because they have over a hundred different color patterns to them. And what's fascinating about them is, of course, they're symmetrical. The pattern on one side of a cow is the same on the other side. We also then discuss the importance, the bola, the marriage, as well as how they're named, which is fascinating because it could be 
either of the shape of the horns of the cow or its color patterns or something like that. People are brave enough, they can go into the cattle kraal and they can milk one of the cattle. We then go up to the main homestead, the hut. We go in there and there we discuss the sacred part of the hut. We discuss the utensils. We discuss pot making. Why, why do Zulu pots have patterns on them? We show and demonstrate how they weave the mats originally and how the floors are made. So they're made with termite nest and then they're sealed and they're polished with fresh cow dung. Again, the people come in, get on their knees and with fresh cow dung, dung the floors. Visitors are welcome to get down and participate and do that. We then go through the history of the Zulu kings from King Shaka through to present day King Goodwill Zuelatini the weapons, and some of the history of the Zulu people. From there, we go down to where the people live. So there are two separate homesteads. One where visitors have their privacy and stay, and the homestead where the Zulu people on the farm live. That's a different experience because you go into the huts where the people are living. So there's lots of smoke, black walls, and it's just everyday life. We go into a main beehive hut where we discuss the construction, how it was built, why it was built like that, and also why the doors are so low. From there, we come back to the original homestead and there we serve a traditional, if it's a day visit, a lunch, and that is followed by Zulu dancing and traditional beer tasting. For overnight stays, we would then come back in the afternoon have sundowners around the fire, serve a traditional supper around the fire, and then end with Zulu dancing that evening and beer tasting. We also stopped with all the indigenous animals and medicinal plants. So you'll see in some of the photographs, we discuss the importance of these plants and what they were used for. We have very reasonable stow rates. And um, if you'd like to contact me after this, I can give you those. Um, if there's any other thing you need to ask me, please feel free. And um, thank you very, very much for this opportunity to showcase something which really does give people an utter authentic experience into Zulu life and Zulu culture. Thank you so thank much, you. David. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we uh, proceed, great suggestion by Carolina, and I'll ask all the participants to please just include the name of their company uh, as well as their name so that it's easy for the attendees to figure out who you are representing. And you can do that in the top right of your screen. If you click your picture, three dots, and rename yourself uh, so that we've got both your name and your company there, that would really, really help. Thank you for that suggestion, Carolina. Next up, we have Molly from Fordoon Hotel and Spa. Molly, if you are with us, could you please unmute yourself and share your screen if you are delivering a presentation? Good day, everyone. Salvada, hello from the KZN Midlands. Can you all hear me? Loud and clear. Fantastic. Um, so good to connect with all of you. Very, very excited. As you can see, I'm smiling and I'm glowing for a change. Um, I'd love to introduce you to a wonderful, personalised, um, one of the few five-star hotels in the Midlands. And um, the unique part about this beautiful destination or this beautiful venue, um, boutique hotel and spa is that it's family-owned, family-managed, and it's focuses on personalized service, um, and I'm going to just take you through it. Um, I will be sending STO agreements and further information fact sheets after this presentation, so you should receive everything by via email by in the next two days. But let's get going. As mentioned, Cordina is a five-star boutique hotel and spa. We are located near Nottingham Road in the KZN Midlands, which is an hour and a half outside Durban and four hours from Johannesburg. Um, the Midlands, Fordun is based over here, it's Peter Maritzburg, and we're also surrounded by the Big Five, Nambiti Lodge, the Battlefields, the Berg, and Johannesburg is up there. We're also very, very blessed to be 
located in the part of the Midlands Meander, which is a Cape Round for many, beautiful boutique um, art galleries, wine farm, and um, an absolute Cape Round for many. Dates, for June dates back to eight, back, date goes back to the 1850s um, when the first Scottish settlers arrived. William Taylor was the first person to live at Fordune, which was then a dairy farm. The name originates from Scotland. As you can see, this is Scott Fordune in, in Aberdeenshire in Scotland, and this is the Fordune over here that we're talking about. As said, um, Fordune is family owned and managed. This is the Bates family who own Fordune, and they're very much part of Fordune um, within the dwellings. Um, this is Fordune in the early days. It was converted, it opened its doors in 2005. Um, as said, it was originally a Jersey dairy farm and um, John Bates was the brainchild behind Fordune, um, the father. And this is our spa, very much focused on healing, rejuvenation. And once you arrive here, you won't leave in a hurry. I can guarantee you that. This is where the cattle used to be milked, the, cool, the heated cool area. Obviously with COVID, a lot of our water treatments are on hold for, um, for now, but we look forward to getting back to where we were. We also have a great character, Dr. Ilian Ngorbu, who has created his signature treatments and also part of, very much part of our ethos. Um, he's a Sangoma, which is a spiritual doctor, as well as an Yanga, very, very, um, very knowledgeable on his plants. That is his ethos in life. You are home, welcome to the energy of Africa. These are, we have, we've got 22 hotel rooms and we also have a self-catering farm village, which offers, which is ideal for families. These are our superior mountain rooms with the views of the Drakensberg in the background. And the views are spectacular. And these are some of the luxury rooms, They're all very much, uh, very intimate and beautifully decorated. Um, our cuisine, very much focused on local. And um, this is the farm village, which offers a beautiful conference wedding venue, a chapel, and ideal for any functions under 200. These are our self catering units. Also ideal for families, and um, as said, and as Kai and everyone in the Midlands has has highlighted, we are a playground. Um, there is so much to do in the Midlands, from fly fishing to the battlefield tours, um, visits to local schools, the cultural side of things. Um, the, the options are endless. We are also very blessed to be part of the Crane Foundation which focuses on raising little cranes in these little domes and teaching them how to fly, which has increased the number, the population of the cranes in this country. As I said, our um, community, most of our, our farm families live on the property and they're very much part of our for you. I'm going to just play a quick short video. And as I said, I will be in touch by email to all of you. And if you have any queries, please, um, I'd love to hear from you. And we look forward to welcoming you. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. Sorry, I will make it a little bit shorter as we go along. Although we Sorry, Molly, there's no sound. I don't know if it's uh, on your side, but I'm yeah. not hearing sound on my side. And perhaps uh, I see it is on YouTube. Perhaps you would paste the YouTube link in the chat uh, so that everybody okay. can have a look at it when 
when they have a mo over some coffee or maybe over some wine. Right. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm sorry about the video, but I will be forwarding you the, the link and um, by email. Thank you for your time and thank you for your interest. Bye. Thanks so much, Molly. So I'm hoping that AD is with us. I wear my queen of tarts. Adi, can you hear us? If you can, please unmute yourself and feel free to share your screen if you are sharing a presentation. Adrian, I think she's having technical issues today. We'll come back to her. No problem. Warwick Cook, hot air ballooning South Africa. Take us to the skies, Warwick. Please unmute yourself and feel free to share a presentation. No? Okay, we'll give him a skip. Steve, Kotsor Lodge and Horse Trail. Steve, are you with us? Would you mind unmuting yourself and share your presentation with us? Yep. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Steve and my wife Lulu. <laughs> uh, to a lot of Southern Drakensburg. Uh, we were established in 1994. We are about two and a half hours from Durban. Yeah, we, we cater for international travelers, domestic travelers. We do um, horse trails and hiking on the farm here, as well as. Um, and hiking into Lesotho. We're the only guys who do a cross-border horse trail into Lesotho from here. Um, yeah, we, it's the area that we live in here in the Southern Drakensburg is a mountainous area. And we, our location is right next to the World Heritage Site. We're a working farm. Uh, we're an authentic uh, working farm and we have cattle, and sheep, horses and a really good place to come to. Uh, we cater for adventurous people, large groups, small groups. We're passionate about our horses, we're passionate about the outdoors. Uh, we give a real personal touch to everything and I think that's what makes a, a big difference here in the Drakensburg and in Lesotho. Um, when we go into Lesotho, there's the area that we operate in, there's no roads. It's really an untouched wilderness. We ride or hike through gorges. There's waterfalls, rivers, open plains, there's wild horses, and we ride next to the wild horses on occasions. Uh, really beautiful people. The Pasutu people are really friendly. And we take all levels of riders, so um, experienced, inexperienced, doesn't matter to us. We have a lodge in a very isolated village, uh, deep in the mountains of Lesudu. The only way you can get there is by horseback and or hiking and uh, or a very good four-wheel drive. Runners. Uh, we have lots of runners going up there. It's, we use it as a high altitude training camp for runners. Uh, when you arrive there, we've got warm beds, warm meals, hot pursuit of bread, bitterly cold beers, hopefully, cool drinks, whatever. And uh, yeah, so you get a really good welcome. The village uh, is very safe. It's, uh, it really hits off freedom as well. You know, you can walk around there. People are friendly. They greet our guests. We've been doing this now for years and years and years. And, um, you know, we, we have 100 pursuit of ponies. Well, over 100 pursuit of ponies. And we've been operating in Lesotho now, cross-border since the year 2000. It's a great experience. Um, we'd love you to join us, just to come and experience that. Uh, you guys maybe even 
be our guests, come and experience it, see for yourself. It is a complete, unique experience. Um, those are some of my kids. <laughs> Only joking. Yeah, but those are some of the village kids. And uh, as you can see, really friendly guys. They're the true blanket people. And uh, when you guys come, you'll see me wearing my blanket as well. So guys, uh, yeah, we'd love to have you. We, um, we work on a commission basis or STO rates. We have heaps of marketing material, really good stuff. I didn't take the photos. Um, we've had uh, professional photographers there. We've taken Country Life there. We've taken Getaway Magazine there, uh, the 4x4 Magazine. And then we've got some super cool videos done by proper, proper videographers. And then, of course, we've got high resolution photos. So we can give those to you. You uh, can use those for your uh, advertising material. And then lastly, but not least, we've got our website and we've got videos for Africa there. So go on to our website, which you're looking at on your screen. And hey guys, thank you so much for listening to me. It's been great. Cheers. Bye. Thanks so much, Steve. Really appreciate it. Looks idyllic. And I must say, it's cold in the Western Cape now, so I would love one of those blankets. Thank you so much for sharing. Right. I see Warwick is back with us. I'm going to take advantage uh, before he hops off due to technical issues. Warwick from Hot Air Ballooning SA, if you could please unmute yourself and share your screen if you are presenting. Yes, where did I share the screen? Anymore? At the bottom, the green thing at the bottom. Hi, folks. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. We can. Oh, wonderful. Just trying to get onto your screen. Yeah, there you are. Sorry, uh, not quite. It's all good. There's a little green box with an arrow in the middle of the bottom of your screen. And if you yeah. click on that, you can just share your presentation from there. Mm, I have an answer uh, there. There we go. Now you just need to open your presentation. Sure. Sorry, Fax, this is a challenge to us. Uh... Tech 101. Okay, so go back to your Google Chrome. Right, and then I can see there are a whole bunch of tabs there. You can see that the one on the right is your post attendee, and to the left you've got FAM presentation. Perhaps click on one of those tabs if that's your presentation. Screen sharing. Uh, there we go. There we go. Is cool. that working? Okay. It Thank is. you very much. Hi, good afternoon, folks. Apologies for that uh, failed launch. Uh, my name is Warwick Cook. I'm the owner and uh, Chief Cook and Bottle Washer of uh, Hot Air Balloon Company called Hot Air Ballooning SA. We are a national provider of hot air balloon services. As you can see from our map, these are our locations throughout the country. Today, however, I would like to concentrate on uh, KwaZulu Natal and hope you'll join them, jump in my basket and let me take you to our first location, which is uh, of course, the iconic Drakensberg Mountains, the barrier of spears. This is our brochure for the Drakensberg. And as you can see, we fly from locations in the Champagne Castle, the amphitheater up north, Giants Castle, and Sony Pass in the bottom. This is what a uh, picture looks like, a view looks like of the uh, flight in the Champagne Valley area, flying over Champagne Sports Resorts golf course. And from there, uh, take you up north to a real wintry scene of the amphitheater and all the way down to Sani Pass where Vince is one of our pilots is taking this balloon flying it just below the Sani Pass Hotel. So those are our main locations in the Drakensberg. We therefore also offer a uh, locations in the Midlands 
and flying from a number of uh, lodges in the area, Enfair Lodge, probably heard from Andrew, Molly's, Fordoon, uh, also do Hartford House and Granny Mouse. Nice and convenient when you can have a night stay over and then join us for a flight in the morning. A little while back, the uh, MEC for Tourism joined us on a flight and yeah, he is giving us a thumbs up for his experience. From there, uh, our closest uh, location to Durban and Peter Maritzburg is uh, Tyler Game Reserve, just 45 minutes drive from Durban. Uh, the possibility of flying over the reserve, uh, but yeah, really convenient to Durban because all flights, as you know, probably take place early in the morning. So we always need you there at sunrise. And then just a quick view of some of our other locations. Of course, this is Clarence, the Free State, Parais in the Free State, the Free of the Fort Dome, and then this is what some of our balloons look like. This was a flight where we flew 36 people with seven balloons in the early morning. Uh, one of the balloons just lifting off there. And uh, this one was taken with uh, 25 people being flown in the Natal Midlands, five of our balloons. These are our pilots presently. That's yours truly on the left. Then Niels van der Merwe, Vince Bradley, and uh, Conrad van Weyck, our resident pilot in Cape Town. Uh, between us folks, we've no, nobody has got less than 15 years of flying experience in balloons. So with us, you can be assured of a real quality, friendly, and professional experience. Uh, to contact us, our Facebook, our name is quite easy to remember. It's Hot Air Ballooning SA. That's our website, what our website looks like. Our Facebook page is just Hot Air Ballooning South Africa. And uh, short and sweet, I'll leave you with a nice, happy, smiley face, which is what balloons and ballooning does for people. Thank you very much for listening and uh, Hot Air Ballooning SA if you would like to contact us. Thank you indeed. Eric, thanks Warwick. I'm smiling, so good, good for you. Right, I'm going to give AD another chance because I know she's dealing with connection issues. So AD, if you are with us and please, I see you unmuted. If you want to share your screen, please go for it. You can just, uh, I think, click on the little button at the bottom. Yeah. The bottom over here. Over here. Oh, there you go. It's just, uh, can you see us, Natalie? Uh, we can. We can see your screen. Okay, good. Okay, great. So, you, okay, that's great. Okay, ready? Yeah. At last. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, off you go. Okay, all right. Good. Hi. Um, hi, all. I'm Aidy from I Wear My, uh, I wear my Aidy's Coffee Shop. Um, we're a teeny little coffee shop um, in the Drakensberg and basically passionate about what we do, um, how we teach our students. We have rural students. Um, so obviously they come straight from school, some haven't completed school, and come into our coffee shop and we teach them either to be a barista, a chef, a front of house. So we really passionate little people. Um, basically my motto is all things are possible. So whoever walks in our door will go out with some knowledge and obviously the customers will go out with a superb meal and um, we're very much um, in-house so all our ladies and gents that work for us um, can do the front house the back of house the coffee machine and so we go we also have a little studio of which artists um, for example steve bull um, a world-renowned artist shows his pieces and that if you can see behind me um, they've painted murals on all our walls and various artists come in and give classes um, in whichever field they prefer. Great, thank you so much and I'm very happy that you managed to get online eventually so thank you. And so much. happy to see you, thanks. <laughs> thanks. 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 So, um, Midlands Meander, 
you are up next and I believe that is Kate Kelly. So Kate, if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself and if you do have a presentation, please feel free to share it. Oh, you know what it was now? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Good, great. Thank you for this opportunity. I am re representing uh, the Midlands Meander Association today in the heart of KwaZulu-Natal, which is a countryside destination for day trips and or overnight stays. I'm gonna show you a quick video um, before I can tell you, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. to get out of this. Uh, stop my video. Can you hear me? Got you. Okay, great. So my name is Kate Kelly. Um, I'm a board member. Marion, uh, who generally does all these things, could not be available today. So I am an owner of one of the accommodation establishments called Beverly Country Cottages on the Midlands Meander. I'm here to invite you out of the city and into the country to experience places and meet people who will really help to restore your soul. We produce a Midlands Meander brochure every year showcasing, you can see it, showcasing all our uh, members with the different routes. Um, it's a little hard to show you that on the screen like this. Um, but as you drive along on one of the many five scenic routes on the Midlands Meander, you will find um, an, an enriching experience at every bend and curve, clean, fresh air, space, country hospitality, um, a place where you can make memories, have fun. There's always lots of activities and things to do and limited experiences, one route at a time, as well as cultural, gorgeous landscapes, uh, dance or fishing with mountains to climb, views to see, um, search out romantic places with restaurants, forests, and accommodations to explore. The picnics and hikes, trails, mountain biking, selective shopping with arts and crafts. In essence, the country in one little small spot in the Midlands. Um, for those to escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life, I really do invite you to come and experience the Midlands Meander, a place of healing and restoration. We would love to connect with you via email or phone um, and to hear your needs and requirements from your clients. We can come up with packages to suit the, their needs and budget. Um, and we would be loving, we would love to hear from you. That's it. Thank you, thanks so much. Right, next up, Sani Pass Tours. Lana, I did see you on, so if you wouldn't mind unmuting yourself, and if you are sharing your presentation, please do share your screen. Hello, everybody. Emma, is my presentation up? Not yet. Uh -huh. Okay. Share screen. That doesn't go so well. Share screen, and there we go. Okay. That's it. Thank you. So, You've heard a bit about um, the Southern Drakensberg um, from a couple of people. So we know that um, Underberg area is in the Southern Drakensberg, which is where we operate. Um, and that is at the base of the Sani Pass. So there's enough 
yes, on the past, and I believe now this particular which is fantastic. Um, you can go on the back, or you can join us um, and go in a four by four excursion. So um, Underberg is coming to visit site, tiny chicken shop you travel in for half hours and get which is a big farming community, but also a big destination because of the Sony Pass. So the Sony Pass is the only entry point into Lesotho via KwaZulu Natal. Um, you do require a 4x4 four four if you want to travel at the Sony Pass. So there's our whole team from the clean the cars and the up to the management team. We uh, have an extra block. They call it new friends every day with people that they have so far. So, a lot of people don't necessarily understand where we are if you're from overseas. Um, on that map, it shows you where it is, and you up to the south, if you want to, towards the Suchu and then Underberg. Uh, the Sony Pass is uh, times up to 2,800 meters above sea level. And we take you into Lesotho most of the time on a day trip where you visit the locals, the local village, you visit the highest pub in Africa and enjoy the drive there overlooking the picture now. I'm going to show you a 60 second video of what you actually um, see on the day trip. Lana, your signal is a little bit dodgy, so it could well be that your video struggles to play. Uh, and yeah, yeah. If, it do, if it doesn't play, you'll have to paste a link into the chat for us. Uh, I can't see it playing. I see a whole bunch of very robust looking men and a couple of women staring at me with their arms folded. <laughs> No, I'll have to send the link. Okay, please just paste it into the chat for us that we've got it. Uh, and that would be Perfect. fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Well, if anybody wants more info, we do offer a and Thank you very much. Thank you, Lana. And if you wouldn't mind having a look at the chat, uh, Sylvia's asked uh, a couple of questions. So I would be grateful if you would respond to those questions in the chat for us. Right, next up we have Janine from Tracks, Trips and Trails. Janine, if you are with us, could I ask you to please unmute yourself and share your screen with us. And Lana, if you can unshare your screen for us. Okay, so hi, I'm Janine um, and I am actually from a company called Five Star Stories. I do digital marketing um, and I do the digital marketing for Tracks, Trips and Trails. So hence I'm helping them out today. Um, so can you see my screen? I can see Sony Pass. Uh, there I can see your screen now. Okay, perfect. Okay. So this is Treks, Trips and Trails overlooking the Bell Park Dam in the central Drakensberg. Um, so with an easy reach of a lot of the fun activities and tours and adventure um, things happening in the central Berg. A lot of golf courses, restaurants, um, and other great places to visit located um, within really easy reach of this property. So Trek Strips and Trails is owned by a lovely couple, Chris and Magda, um, and they have two little cottages on the property which they also live on. Um, so the two little cottages that they own and operate are Bergfleet and Bahati, and they're both self-catering cottages, perfect for families, groups of friends, with magnificent views out towards the Drakensberg over the Bell Park Dam. Um, so this is uh, Bergfle, sorry, and this is um, the little views from the cottage front. You can see here, I'm not gonna open each picture, but you can get a little overview of what the cottage looks like, fully equipped kitchen, lounge, um, great for those longer getaways to the Berg. But the real shining star and what I love about their property is Bahati Tree Lodge. So Chris himself handcrafted this magnificent tree house. It's really amazing. He's super passionate about it. 
um, magnificent views out towards the Berg. Everything's in wood. You can overlook the dam from your shower. Um, fully equipped kitchen yet again. Even the tree running through the bathroom there. It really is beautiful. Um, so those are the two little um, cottages on the property itself. Um, as I mentioned, magnificent views from the property out towards the central berg. And this um, swimming pool as well, again, handcrafted by Chris. Um, rock pool effect with magnificent berg views. Um, and of course, they do offer SDO rates um, to all travel agents. And then I think another thing um, that really sets the trails um, and Chris and Magda is that they've spent their lives working in the travel industry. And the two of them have four by four throughout Africa and South Africa. And they've really um, dedicated themselves to creating bespoke experiences for clients. So they can arrange a range of activities um, in the area surrounding them and throughout South Africa, um, from e-biking to scoot touring, um, to hot air ballooning. Um, sorry. Um, sorry. Visits to um, local rock art, cliffing, quad biking. Um, and yeah, all of the different adventure activities in the area. Um, Chris knows them all personally. He's worked for the Drakensberg Tourism Board. So he knows absolutely everything there is to do in and around his property um, and can really arrange amazing experiences for clients when they're on the ground and staying in his tree house or at the cottage. Um, yep, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you so much, Janine. Great. Any questions for any of our presenters today? Sorry, I have a question, not uh, to the presenters, but regarding tomorrow, if I can. Of course, go for it. Okay, we have uh, two seminars at the same time tomorrow. This one, and there is uh, the seminar of SATSA um, about future of South African tourism. Great there... question, Sylvia. So the seminar that's being held tomorrow is actually not a SATSA webinar. It is a Tourism Business Council Tourism Recovery Team uh, webinar. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. it is at the same time as the KZN event. And I would like to suggest uh, if you would please keep to your KwaZulu-Natal, um, if you have RSVP for your KwaZulu-Natal uh, to go through the Elephant Coast, because that Tourism Business Council event actually will be recorded and okay. will be distributed on Friday. So it's not a SATSA event, it's a TBCSA event, and it is being recorded, so you will have access to it by okay. Friday. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you very Great. much. No problem, Sylvia. Thanks for asking the question. It's a good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Please feel free to put your hand up um, using the nonverbal cues or perhaps in the chat if you'd like to just throw your question into the chat, we can help respond to them. Once more me, Sylvia. Um, I have written the question down in the chat, but I wanted to repeat it. It's for Lana uh, about visas to Lesotho because I deal with a tourist from Poland and they need visa to Lesotho, but visa to Lesotho costs $100. So nobody will pay $100 just to go for day trip to Lesotho for centers. Is there any other solution to that? Hmm. Another good question, Sylvia. Hi, Anna. Sylvia. Thank you for your question. Um, what I normally recommend for countries that do require visas is to perhaps look at a longer tour into Lesotho so that it's more, it makes more sense to spend that money. Um, I've had a lot of overland um, clients exactly like that. And then it doesn't seem so expensive, but I agree for a day trip, it really is a high 
Yeah, but with, uh, with incentive tours, uh, it doesn't work very often that you can go to overland tour, not, but you can do day trip to sunny pass. And these yes. are usually, you know, um, nice groups. Um, but as I said, I mean, no company will pay $100 for visa just to do day trip. So I would suggest to find other solution. Otherwise, you lose quite a lot of business and money. Yeah, we don't. We generally discourage it for a day trip. I mean, we have this frustration all the time. So generally, the the first mark that those all don't need visas, and we yeah very seldom get Polish guests because of that exact thing. So it's out of our hands. But if it changes, um, we'll definitely let you know. Okay, cool. Thank you. Graham, you're up. This is your opportunity to shine. Well, so, yeah, I think my, my forehead is, is shining more than my spirit, but, uh, you know, we, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks once again, everybody, for, for joining us. It's been a great, another great session. It really, really makes me sort of with uh, itchy feet to get out there into the Drakensberg and the, the Midlands. So, um, yeah, as soon as it's open, we'll, we'll all be experiencing it again. So we do have a winner. Uh, let me just go on to my messages. I might video, I might cut off. Um, it's Louise Ben, and she has won, won a hot air ballooning. Um, did, did you all get that? Louise Ben, hot, hot air ballooning um, from, from Hot Air Ballooning SA. So congratulations, Louise, and the team will be in touch with your prize. So thanks once again, everybody, and have a great Wednesday night, yes? And we'll see you uh, tomorrow at the same time, 3 p.m. for the last session of the KZN Virtual Fam. So thanks again, and uh, have a great evening. Thanks so much, Graham. Same place, same time. See you tomorrow. And thank you so much to all our friends in KwaZulu Natal for sharing some of their heart and soul with us today. Have a lovely evening. I hope to see you all tomorrow. Good evening. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye.